Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at RGB and addressable RGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video we're going to take a look at RGB, addressable RGB, and all the madness that is stuck in between it. So possibly you've looked into RGB, or maybe you've already got RGB on your case, your motherboard, graphics card perhaps, or maybe an LED strip such as these. So there's basically two types of RGB, two main types anyway. There's the four pin RGB, which is four pins consisting of red voltage, green voltage, blue voltage, and a ground. And the RGB color is controlled by varying the levels of voltage to each one of those lines. Alternatively, with addressable RGB, we've got three pins, one of which is power, one of which is ground, and the other one is data. So much like analog versus digital, RGB is analog effectively, and addressable RGB is digital. So the main differences between those two types are essentially how you can change the colors of your RGB, the LEDs as it were. So with a RGB standard, this is an RGB header and an RGB strip. So this essentially would replicate what is your four pin header on your motherboard, just because I don't want to have two motherboards set up and all that kind of stuff. So this is one of those kits you can buy off Amazon pretty cheaply if you just want to add a bit of RGB to your system. Perhaps you haven't got RGB, which is another thing which we'll go into a little bit later. But essentially this controller would replicate what happens in your software. So by telling it to be red, it would go red. Tell it to go green, it'll be 100% voltage on green, blue, etc, etc. Now you can choose for white, which would then be a mixture of different colors, all full blast, to create a kind of pseudo white. Now, depending on the angle of the camera and how you look at this, when you look at the white, it isn't a true white and you can actually see the various colors in there, sort of at the corner of your eye kind of thing. So it's not really a true color representation. Alternatively, with addressable RGB, you get a very similar setup. The LEDs are controlled in a very similar way by controlling the voltage, but each one of these LEDs has its own individual controller chip built into the LED. A tiny, tiny little processor which takes care of the data and the controller, which in this case is this tiny little box which replicates the three pin controller on a motherboard, interprets the digital data in a much smaller form into what the light color should be. Now the benefits of having an addressable strip is each one of these LEDs can be individually controlled from the processor, unlike with traditional RGB where all the LEDs in the strip are all wired in parallel or series or whatever it may be. So essentially they all are exactly the same at the same time. So for instance, if I put this into fade mode, so as you can see, it's fading through the colors and they're all changing at exactly the same time. Now this strip is actually in fade mode as well, but what we can do, we can individually address each one of the LEDs to change color at individual time. So you get much more control and much more creativity. Now, this can also lead to slightly more expense, but also on the flip side can also lead to other things like incompatibility or synchronization issues, which leads me on to the differences between these setups. So the main difference is obviously, like I said before, with addressable RGB, you've got pretty much full control. With standard RGB, you're limited, but you still have some control over it color-wise. But unfortunately, into the mix, we've got other types of RGB standards which have crept into the market in order to keep things a little bit cheaper or just to differentiate themselves in the market. Now there's certain players like Gigabyte, Thermaltake, Sahara for one, who all have slightly different takes on the RGB standard. Now they all work in essentially the same way by changing the, either the voltage for the RGB system or digitally with the addressable RGB, but they generally tend to have their own pin set up. So unfortunately they can be that kind of mix and match as these other standardized systems can be. So if you've got a Gigabyte system, for instance, they use a three pin header, which actually in this kit, there is a three pin adapter. The Sahara kits, their fans come with a five pin connector, which connects to their own customized control block, which then in turn can connect to a three pin addressable RGB header. So there's lots of uh, things out there which can make this very confusing for you. Now, essentially the one way to remove any confusion is to try and stick to one particular brand, which you'd think is easy, but it's actually not that easy and it can turn out to be quite expensive. Now in my ASUS uh, X370 motherboard behind in the Inwin 101C case, now the 101C case supports 
four pin RGB, as does the motherboard, so that's all good. The in-win fans, again, they support four pin RGB. So in that system, I've got a pretty good synchronization going on. It isn't addressable, so it, it has to go through the color cycle and all the LEDs are the same color at the same time. So we can't get the fancy kind of chase mode and things like that. But still, it is a very complete system and it all works together and it doesn't go out of sync. But unfortunately, in order to continue that RGB on to other components controlled by the ASUS software, I would need an ASUS keyboard or ASUS mouse, ASUS graphics card, ASUS monitor perhaps, all of which are quite expensive peripherals and a little bit out of my budget. So unfortunately, I've got RGB supplied by the Rio Toro Ghostwriter keyboard and the Aurox mouse. So unfortunately, because that software doesn't cooperate or interoperate with the ASUS Sync software, unfortunately, the RGBs are all out of sync. So although they still light up, they're not as in sync as they should be. So obviously there's reasons for and against keeping all with one brand or one supplier. Now, if Sahara actually work out really well because with their case with the addressable RGB controller and these fans, the fans themselves are actually very cheap. You're looking at about seven or eight pounds. The actual controller that they connect to is about seven or eight pounds as well. So it's a very, very cost-effective way of doing it. The control around fans, you don't have to use with a Sahara case. You can choose to do that if you wish, to have even more kind of compatibility across the range. And the beauty is you don't have to use any software. You can just use the Sahara control panel to do whatever you want to do with it. So to do it slightly cheaper, you have your limitations, or you can add on other devices, such as USB keyboards, mice, etc., etc. But if you just want a system and do it as cheap as possible, addressable, then the Sahara is definitely a good way of going. So going on to other custom modules. So the other custom modules, which I've done reviews of previously, uh, the Tink, Tinkam, which is this LED strip, and the, I don't even know what brand that it was. What brand did I say it was? Oh, Speclux, not very memorable. So this is the Speclux strip. Again, if you've got a system which hasn't got any RGB at all at the moment, but you wanna add some RGB to it in some way, shape or form, Either one of these kits are actually really good. If you've got a board with four pin, go with the Tincam. If you've got a board with three pin, go with the Speclux, but you don't necessarily have to have either one of those controllers because both kits come with a built-in controller already, which is optional and is powered by, in both cases, actually powered by a SATA connector, which is really nice to see. So hopefully that's gone some way to uh, clear up some of the confusion around RGB, addressable RGB and the different brands. Unfortunately, the RGB market essentially is in a mess. Everyone's sort of going off on their own little tangents with it, with different pieces of software, different pieces of hardware, different pins, different connections. It is a real mess. And I don't think anytime soon we're gonna see it all come together into one kind of uniform method of operating it, which is unfortunate, but that is the thing with PCs and the electrical market. There is that element of customizability, so people take advantage of that. So if you've got any questions about RGB or addressable RGB or any of the kits mentioned in this video, feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.